Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. And today I'm gonna do a little bit of different. I've been doing programming for this now and now I want to start doing a little bit more electronics as well. So this video is gonna start breaching uh, uh, between digital, between Arduinos and uh, the STM in our case and a little bit more electronics and I'm gonna do it with the fun project and it's coming out of personal experience and something that I wanted to do a long time and now had the time to get around to. So as it seems to be just me but also my fellow classmates and other engineers that at least once in a lifetime an engineer electrical becomes obsessed with audio and power supplies and I've dealt with power supply obsession as well I built more than 15 power supplies in my lifetime and still going to and also I had a little bit of uh, audio bugs bit me as well I built some amplifiers but never, never really took much care of it but a little less than a year ago I got myself a good pair of headphones for a suggestion from my friend just to have a little bit better experience listening to music and the experience was night and day I never heard music as well so I wanted to do more I needed an amplifier for my headphones well I made it and I'm really proud of it and still improving on it but then I noticed that in very good music, in very large dynamic range, there was a lot of hissing and sparkling and other kinds of unwanted noise. And it didn't come from the recording, but it came from the computer or phone integrated sound card. So what happens is that the integrated sound card is surrounded by all the noise of the computer, so it's not very pure output. So that way you need to make your own sound card to be external from the computer or at least very filtered and converts the audio itself instead of the computer and pass it on to some kind of headphones or a headphone amplifier and then to headphones. So in this case I wanted to just that, my own sound card to control my headphones or other kind of audio to have the best sound experience that you can get and then I can advance on the amplifiers. So in this case, well, we need a DAC. If you watched a few videos behind, I talked about how to uh, control the DAC peripheral inside the STM32 microcontroller. So that one has a DAC peripheral. So DAC is, of course, when we go to online, it's a digital to analog converter. So it's a peripheral that many of uh, young Arduino engineers, uh, so-called, uh, don't really know because Arduinos don't usually have DAC inside them, usually rely on PWM and some filtering. But DAC is a very good peripheral that bridges a little bit a digital and analog circuitry. In this case, that most of the time when you only have ADC on hand, you can just read what's happening in the world. Some kind of analog sensors, analog values like voltage or power in the battery and current but with DAC you can interact with it so let's say you have a circuit that controls brightness of an LED maybe you have a circuit that speeds a motor or maybe an op -amp circuit that really relies on a real analog value well you can have a DIC to convert digital value that you want into an analog voltage and in audio case when you search DAC you get audio equipment and there's lots of it that can be small ones that can be big ones that can have integrated headphone amps speaker amps that can be very expensive like multi thousand dollars or stuff like that so the decks can get really expensive but audio is very notorious for being for being able to go to very expensive waters and i'm not going to talk about if it's worth it to talk, uh, to have a lot of money invested to it. Everyone finds value in something they buy. I want something that has value that I know it has and this is the only way to do it to build it by hand, research it and test it and be satisfied with it. But in the end when you're satisfied with it you did a great job and you have a good product on your hand. In this case I really want to have a good deck also buying a Chinese deck for 20 euros, but I want this one to be handmade uh, with very good selection of components to be very good so I can have it as a reference to play around with other or uh, headphone amplifiers or other gear that we're gonna talk about it. So, to back to anal uh, for audio decks. Analog decks have to be fed a digital form of audio data. 
And for that, there's a standard. It's called I squared S. And not to be confused with I squared C. It's just an uh, unfortunate, uh, common name. Well, it's a, a serial bus that has been reserved for audio purposes only. Well, you can send out the data by it, but it's optimized and it's made really by NXP or former Philips uh, to be transferring audio data. So in this case, we have a timing diagram of I squared S and we have a serial clock, the word select and data. Well, the serial clock and the serial data, you probably know why they would exist, but word select is a new one. Well, word select basically says this data here is for the, let's say, left channel and this data here is for the right channel. So this is how the deck knows for which channel it's converting the transfer data. Often as well is another line which is much faster than serial clock and it's the master clock line and it's the one that gives the clock for the deck to operate and it's gonna be way faster than a serial clock. Let's say that the audio is uh, sampled at 48 kilohertz and let's say for the sake of argument that this clock is working at 48 kilohertz. Well the master clock could be working at megahertz or more. So this is oversampling and that's making the deck move and actually do its job and clock is just for the interpretation of the input data for the synchronization here we have uh, a little bit of diagram what the uh, the serial clock might be and the master clock would be multiple of this as well and this is the l squared s so this is the physical protocol but then the protocol that has handles how the data is transferred is different. Well, the most uh, known is PCM and the DSD, which is the buzzword for new hi-fi and equipment. And the difference is the PCM works exactly like shown here for the S squared S mode, so to say, which is sending in packets, packets of audio for uh, left, right, left, right. Meanwhile, DSD is, uh, has much higher clocks and just sending data all the time. It's not in packets, but it's all the time. So it's a direct stream digital or something like that. So it's direct, just streaming data. So that, in theory, ensures better quality. So, with all this said, how do we get this form of data from our computer to our DAC? Well, the answer is so-called some kind of streamer. Well, this is one. So this one is very expensive, but you'll see a trend over here. It's this one, maybe this one from JLA Sounds. Uh, this one's all from them, M and Arrow they also have, and also from AliExpress. Very common one is gonna be this one with the Xmos IC. So this uh, this is a very popular IC that can handle audio data. It has multiple clock generators on board and handles the USB interface and the audio side. No matter what you buy, it has to support I2S, sometimes you'll say SPDIF, so this is another protocol. So it has all these lines. It's, well, let's have a good picture. Oh, so it's ground, DSD for DSD audio as well, master clock, so this is the one that I have talked about, left right clock, which is the main clock, block clock, which is the uh, the clock that we talked about. So this is the block clock and this is the left-right clock. So the, the naming usually shifts a little bit. And the data in the end. So your USB interface or USB to I squared S interface should have these lines and you should be set. No matter the manufacturer, you just need the appropriate board size, connectors and the specifications. And the main specification that you're looking for is the sampling rate. So this is, in this case, 384 kilohertz. So this is the max sample rate of the music you can send. Also, it's the resolution, which is the bit width, or 32 or 24 bit. So in this case, it handles uh, 32 bit over I squared S. So this is what you need to look bit and the frequency for the DSD if you really need it, or the PCM, which is the one that we're going to use. So this is all the common things and then it's just the price availability and uh, physical board size and uh, of course the specification and when you buy uh, con 
uh, uh, set on the one you want. I have this one on my desk from a friend and mine is a little bit different because I wanted to try something else because uh, let's say that that one can work as well and it's still on the way from China but th I have this one to test my board as well right now. So you have to choose your interface between USB so the computer and the digital audio. So now you just need to choose your deck. Well, there's a lot of them. There are decks from uh, uh, analog devices, Texas Instruments, and some other companies uh, um, that I didn't, don't remember right now, but they're very prevalent in high-end audio and uh, computers. Uh, they have integrated uh, deck cards in the computers also. And you can search them online, you can find them, and as well, DAC has to meet your specification in order of bit bandwidth, uh, some kind of uh, uh, the faster sample rate, the uh, noise, the all that. So when your choice is here, you'll find something like this. Let's full screen it. In this case, Texas Instruments is very known for their Brum Brown division, which is the one that uh, the company that they acquired a long time ago. And they were specializing in uh, analog sections, specifically ADCs, DACs, op-amps, uh, transistors. I believe their parent company, the one that actually invented the uh, op-amp or something like that. So this is a very well-respected IC in the audio forum community. And it's a series of family of PCM179 and there's two, there's four, there's six, there's eight. There are different flavors, but they're the same IC. They have the same distortion and all the numbers, just different have programming options and some don't. And this one, in order to be a little bit of embedded project as well, has programming options as well. It has I squared C or uh, SPI mode, and we're gonna use my favorite SPI. But later we talk about I squared C as well. It accepts DSP, or PCM, so it has D, uh, DSD, PCM as well, with multiple modes, except multiple bit widths, uh, multiple system clock, uh, sampling frequency, the max is 192 kHz, which is pretty fast, and not a lot of audio is still sampled at this. So it has very low distortion, so this is for the IC as, uh, itself, in the appropriate mode. And you have all the jazz as well, the supply workings and that. So what do you look for in an IC? Well, in this case, this IC is very uh, not that difficult to interface. It has a lot of pins, but it's a very generous package that can be hand soldered or heat soldered onto a breakout board or onto your homemade PCB. In this case, it's very good made because it has digital and analog side separated. Let's look at it. This side is all digital and this is all analog. It has your digital power supply, digital ground, your reset for the IC, your digital uh, communication line. So this is the uh, SPI or R2C. And here's your audio portion and this is some additional uh, periphery. On this side we have power supply here, here, ground here. Uh, there's a reference pin, another common uh, pins over here, another supply, another ground. So it's mostly supply on this side, obviously. And then we have outputs here and outputs here for left and right. And you're wondering what is minus plus and minus plus and all that. And we're gonna go through that as well. So when you find your IC, you just want to match, uh, see uh, what the pin does, what it can do. Maybe see this block diagram, which shows what what's happening inside of it, what you need to provide it. Maybe see some graphs, how the frequency response is uh, according to the output, how some filters also work. It has lots of, it has a few embedded filters that can be tuned. And here's the total harmonic distortion. So as we can see that the lowest that it can be, which is over here, and let's say supply voltage 5 volts, it's 0 0.00, let's say, because it's logarithmic, 1 7 over here at sampling for 84 kilohertz but if you want to uh, listen to music at full 192 kilohertz well you're gonna suffer quite a bit uh, in THD from the IC alone excluding the output stage 
Also here we have dynamic range and stuff like that. So when you're choosing your deck, just choose on your parameters that you need. Make sure to check these kind of charts if it uh, fits your needs and then go with it. You're probably gonna work it fine. It's gonna have some uh, tutorials or some example circuits as well inside. And then we have how the audio portion is working for different system clocks. So this is the sampling frequency for the audio and this is the master clock over here. We're gonna look at that as well, how it's working, uh, the PCM timing, how it's done, how the data is coming in. Here is the SPI interface, how it works, uh, I squared C uh, protocol, how it works over here, all the register described over here. And then when you go through all that, we can go to example circuit and we're going to talk about it. So oh, that's a lot. I got lost. Here we go. Here we go. So let's talk about it. So this I see here we have the PCM audio source. We have a controller that talks to it so we can change the settings. We have digital supply and we have some analog supply and decoupling and all sorts of capacitors. And then we have some op amps and some squares over here. And we have output for left and right channel. So what is going on? So these little more high-end ICs, especially DAX and ADC, stop working with single-ended, which is what you're used to. Single-ended is in this case a clock signal over here. A single-ended signal is respected to some common point. In this case, it's the common ground. So single-ended signal, like an analog signal, is just flowing and you're reading it like an, an oscilloscope. Meanwhile, a differential signal does not need to be dependent on a reference point like ground. But differential signal uh, requires two pairs or one pair with two wires. So in this case, it's minus and a plus. And this basically takes one signal and splits it into two signals where one of them is 180 in shift. I'm going to put some pictures on the wall and I'm going to draw something on the board later. So basically you have two opposing signals that are identical but 180 degrees out of phase. So what that does, it uh, creates a very pure signal that can be uh, manipulated later over long distances or short distances and is very immune to error because all the impurities and all the um, other stuff that can come from the background does not affect the end result. But it's not a voltage output. You can see it's I out or current out. So the output of this deck is not even voltage, but it's current. So the first thing we need to do is transform current output into a voltage output. And that's called a trans impedance or transducence amplifier. And this is the this case over here. It, it's an IV amplifier also called because it transforms I into V, current into voltage. And then you have two voltage differential, so you have a differential pair with voltage. And then you need to convert it to listen to audio. So your audio cable might have three poles. So let's just look at it. So you can search AOX cable. And let's uh, search something meaningful. So in this case, well, this is a RCA cable. So RCA cable has plus and minus, plus and minus, and this is common ground. And this is a single-ended connection because this signal is uh, independent to the ground. And on uh, AOX cable, which is this one, has left, right, and the common ground. But you can also have left uh, plus, left minus, ground plus, ground minus. And this is called a differential audio signal. So differential audio, in this case, has two lines. And that, in order to be converted to single-ended, needs some kind of differential to single-end converter over here. And that is described over here depending on your needs. If you have a stereo 2-volt uh, RMS output, constant voltage output, for these parameters, then this circuit is in order for each channel. So this is like left or right channel. So you can copy this circuit twice. So what's going on here? We have, this is the IV converter that converts current into voltage. And this is the differential conversion that's going to handle two 
differential uh, signals that are 180 out of phase of each other and convert one big single ended uh, signal that's going to be respected to ground. So I have drawn a few circuits on the board, so let's talk about it. So this is the trans impedance amplifier. That's because it transforms impedances. And in this case, it transforms current, which is on the left side, to the voltage on the right side. So in the left side, let's say we have a current source over here that forces an, a certain I input current. So if you don't know a lot about op amps, I suggest you go to watch some op amp videos by Dave Jones or anybody on YouTube uh, to know the basics of op amps. So we're gonna just advance on these basics. So one of the rules of the op amp is that the current flowing into the inputs is zero. The difference between the input pins, so this difference over here, is has to be zero. And this current is also zero, and this one is also zero. So the difference is zero, the current input is zero, and the amplification of this device is infinite. So with that knowledge, what we can see? Okay, we have in a non-inverting pin tied to ground. So in this case, this forces a virtual ground over here. Okay, so this point also has to be ground. So whatever current is flowing over here has to go over here. Why? Because the current into the input of the terminals has to be zero as well, because we just said it. So all the current that goes over here has to go up and through this resistor and then here, and we have open, uh, open over here, so it has to go into the amplifier. So in this logic, we have a positive current going into here, and it creates a positive voltage over here, like this, over this feedback resistor. The voltage over this feedback resistor, so the URF, is the Ohm's law, is the resistance times the current that's going through it. And if this is positive, the ohms have to be positive, this voltage is positive. And in order to convention, if the current is flowing this way, the voltage drop across the resistor is gonna be plus here and minus here. And because we have ground here and a virtual ground here, so this point over here is zero volts, then if this is the positive, then this is negative according to zero volts. So over here we have a negative voltage. So what we can see that this amplifier flips polarity and by 180 degrees. So if we have a negative current, we have a positive voltage. If we have a positive voltage, we have a negative current. So that's why the equation for the output voltage is minus input current uh, uh, times the RF resistance, the, the feedback resistance. So we have successfully transformed the current into a voltage. So this is what is going on on the screen over here. So this is this portion over here. We have inverting in the ground and non-inverting non in the ground and inverting has to be forced through this resistor over here. Now let's talk about uh, quickly about this capacitor. So we have in the circuit effectively a capacitor like this. So what this capacitor does that at high frequencies this capacitor is going to conduct and it's going to uh, allow current over here. In this case it's going to start bridging this resistor. If the resistance goes down the, or here, if the resistance goes down, effective resistance of this resistor, then the output voltage goes down as well. So with higher frequency, let's see, with one hand, if we have U out and the frequency over here, we have the constant output voltage with higher and higher frequency, but at one end it's gonna start rolling off. So this is a characteristic of low pass filter and this capacitor has been chosen so the higher and uh, frequencies and harmonics and certain unwanted frequencies that we don't want to have amplified are uh, filtered out. So this is uh, addition filter. So the next circuit is this one. This is a difference amplifier. 
The summing amplifier is very uh, simple and it's one of the basics that you should have watched by now. This one is a little bit different. This amplifier has two inputs, a negative and a positive, and it's basically a differential amplifier in this case. It takes a differential signals, by the way, if you didn't see the stuff that I drew before. So let's say this signal is like this, and this signal is something like this. So this, you can see that this portion over here is this, and this portion over here is here. So these are 180 degrees out of phase. And in the end, spoiler, it's gonna be a one twice as big single-ended signal according to ground. And this is what we can go to our speaker or our headphones or stuff like that. So how does it work? Well, if you watch the basics video, I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm gonna cover this and let's say that this part is going to ground. What do you see? I see an inverting amplifier. This is a characteristic inverting amplifier. So this is the inverting input through RG, commonly referred, and RF over here, and the output voltage. So we have inverting op amp. What if I do this? I, I just remove this point and put this point to ground. What do I do? Well, we have an input, we have a voltage divider, so the input voltage is divided, but then we have just inverting output stage if this is at ground. And if we have the equations ready for inverting and non-inverting and we add them together, we have equation for this. And this is called the law of superposition because the component is linear and it's working in linear mode, we can do that. And in the end you get this. The gain is R2 over R1. If these two are equal and these two are equal, this formula uh, is according to this scenario. And that's exactly what happens over here. So let's go to my screen. So this is what happens here. We have two identical input and two identical bridging resistors. So these are resistors that set the gain. So the gain is a little bit lower than 1, so R270 uh, divided by 560 ohms, so it's a little around half. And we also have some capacitors still forming some kind of low pass filter. If this is a, a voltage divider, then this bottom that goes to the ground is bypassed, so it's filtering. And this one also it's low pass filtered as well. And this is basically the explanation of these circuits. So back to the computer. So I hope that the video that I show you around these circuits made any sense. And well, I don't want to have this video very much longer. I have uh, have to a little bit split this video into more sections, but don't worry, don't uh, wait until everything. Remember, go ahead and choose your I squared S device. I myself am happy with this one, it works, so there's no problem on Windows and Linux, of course. And, well, order it now, because you're probably gonna wait like a month. Or my friend got this into less than two weeks, so he has a lot of luck. But, yeah, order this because you can never go wrong with it. This is universal for any deck you build and any amplifier, any headphones you're gonna get. So the point is to really have it universal. That's why some kind of decks that have integrated USB, okay, no problem, but decks that have integrated USB and amplifier, it's a little controversial because you might want a better amplifier, a different amplifier with different flavors and stuff like that. So we're gonna go over that, why I want to have it integrated or not. So, but I still just recommend it to just find something as lowest price and just works. And with Xmos, you're probably gonna be fine. It's very reliable. A lot of people use it and integrate it in their own circuit. So buy some kind of it like this. And then in the next video, we're gonna go over the physical board, how I build the prototype by hand, because I think that it's not really necessary to start uh, making PCB right away, because, well, you can save a little bit of money and it still can work very well without a dedicated PCB, uh, because it's 
very well laid out and we're gonna go into the technologies what to use how to choose the parts is this the best parts that to use are uh, really this one that you really need to use uh, and we're gonna talk all about that so until then next time thank you for watching and i'll see you next time